All right. Welcome back to No BS Just News with Steve. As always, I'm your host. Thanks for tuning in to the best YouTube around. Just kidding. Hey, listen up. I'm going to make this quick. I've got a lot going on. You know, facing some adversity, some decisions to make. And, um, you know, adversity is tough. Making tough decisions, dealing with tough things, mentally exhaust you. Um, and that might not be for everyone, but definitely for me, I, um, I become mentally exhausted and sometimes I feel like I just can't even think straight. And I always, as I always say, it's okay not to be okay. But don't stay that way, right? You got to seek some type of help. You got to put some effort into making your life better, making your children's life better, your grandson, your, your granddaughter, nieces, nephews, just family in general. And, um, you know, that's, that's some things that I'm, I'm currently working on, making some lives better. Um, but there's just a lot of things that have to take place to hap to make that happen. And unfortunately, sometimes when things have to be taken to a court of law, the court just doesn't see it from your perspective. Anyway, so I'm going to leave that there. So I wanted to touch on the Department of Corrections and my time at the Department of Corrections. I spent several years there. I worked in a lot of different positions, did a lot of different things, <laughs> wrote a lot of investigations, <coughs> took part in them, interviewed inmates, interviewed officers, terminated officers for crossing the line, having relationships with inmates, whether it was drugs, whether it was sexual relationships, cell phones, you name it, it happens, and, and I've been part of that. Um, but going into the prison and being where you're facing adversity and you've got some stress in your personal life, this might sound crazy, but it always helped me to go into the prison, drop my, my, my stress at the door, go work the yard when I was on the yard, especially in the mail facility. You know, there's always a something you're going to get yourself into as an officer, whether you're running chow or you're switching out kitchen officers or you're doing zones or you're responding to your sergeant, your lieutenant captain, maybe your deputy warden uh, about incidents that happened on the prior shift or an incident that just happened, a fight, a stabbing, an assault. Who, who knows? There's always something going on. So I could get my stresses out just by being working hard, dealing with inmates, making sure they're in compliance, <laughs> making sure I'm giving that respect so I can earn that respect back because they're human beings just like all of us. They just had made some, you know, obviously they made some bad choices in life that have led them to a life in prison, some doing you know, short time sentences, some doing all day where they're never going to get out. Um, but it would help me to relieve stress. And I'm not talking about going in there and getting in fights with inmates and, and uh, you know, things like that. But what I'm saying here is, is those days are over. And uh, I got, I, lately I've, I've had a lot of time to reflect um, because I work from a virtual environment and, um, you know, I'm busy. But I, it's, I've done a lot of self-reflection. Um, you know, I had a couple of months there where I was going through vertigo really bad and uh, I was just dizzy like crazy. But I miss that and I miss corrections from a standpoint of that those relationships that I created the day-to-day -day just non-stop busy 
from a from a different viewpoint. Yeah, I'm busy, but I'm I'm more administrative busy. Um, I'm not out there in the field, getting my hands dirty, running a yard, supervising 25 to 35 officers at a time. You know, right now it's performance review season. I used to do, you know, 25 to 30 performance reviews. When I went to an operational um, leadership position as a sergeant, you know, I had less staff. I had, I think I had 12 to 13 staff, but I miss that. I miss being a leader. I miss supervising. I, I miss mentoring. I miss teaching my staff how to be successful without constantly yelling at them or giving them bad advice or not following, following through with them or follow up or just basic direction from a supervisor is solid. And I miss that. You know, I had a lot of good, solid relationships, um, work relationships with my officers. And uh, even as, as, as myself, as when I was an officer, I, I created a lot of relationships. And I just miss the day-to-day -day activity um, where I could go in there and just leave some you know, get my frustrations out on the yard because you're just constantly busy. You're busy, busy, busy. And that might sound ridiculous, but that's just how it was. You know, for a lot of people, it's the complete opposite. They're going into an even more stressful environment and it makes it worse. But for me, I never, I was never in fear. I never was in fear from day one. I was never in fear. I, I just don't, have that mentality. I'm not a fearful person. Yeah, there's things that scare me, of course. I'm a human being. But you just got to know in a prison setting, something can happen at any given time, especially if you're working a supermax unit down in Florence or Iman, even at Tucson. Tucson, I don't know if it still is, but Tucson Complex at one time was rated the worst prison in the state of Arizona. I don't know if it's still like that, but it's just, you know, I miss the supervision of all the the officers. You know what I mean? I'm just in a different, I just don't have as many staff around me and, you know, my team's small. And But I've, I got some great, I got a great team. I really do. I can't, I can't, uh, I can't deny that. So, and, and, you know, it's not even, I'm not even talking about where I'm now. I'm just talking about, I'm just reflecting. So if you're going to choose a career with the Department of Corrections, really do some self-reflecting before you, before you decide to take that jump because they're very short-staffed right now. All the prisons are short-staffed. Things are popping off left and right. It used to be 21 um, to be able to go through the academy and become a correctional officer. And at 21, you're still very young-minded, probably pretty immature, and you're still, you know, you're still trying to grow. You haven't had that many life lessons yet. Maybe some of you have, but a lot of you have not. You really haven't dealt with life yet. And now the age is 18 to where you're just graduating high school. When I just had graduated high school, I did not have the mindset to become an officer especially inside of a prison facility, because you really don't have any life experience as an adult. You do as an adolescent, but not as an adult. You, you don't know what responsibility is. And some do, some do. I mean, because they've had to be responsible their whole adolescent life because maybe their parents weren't involved or whatever the case was. But, you know, there's a percent that do. But when I'm talking about life lessons going through having to pay bills and stressful situations as an adult because you're caring for yourself. You don't have your parents there to provide or your aunt or your, your grandma, your nana, your tata. Who knows who provided for you or yourself, right? You were working from an early age. Think about it before you jump in to a law enforcement type role. Because for me, it was the op exact opposite, as I said. Adversity, I could... I enjoyed going to work. For a lot of people, they don't enjoy going into an even more stressful environment. And working in law enforcement inside of a prison or on the streets is a stressful environment. 
especially when you're inside the walls and there's only like eight officers to seven, 800 inmates, right? You're going to lose if something pops off while you're waiting for a tactical support unit to show up or whatever, whatever support you're waiting to show up. It's going to get tough. So that's why I'm saying earn the respect that you want as an officer. It's earned, not given. It's earned, not given. Remember that. Don't go in there with a cocky mindset, talking shit to the inmates and and running your mouth because here's the thing. They've been through life and adversity and they'll kill you. Period. They don't there's a lot of them that don't have anything to lose. They're doing all day. They have heinous crimes. They are not mentally stable. Give the respect. Don't cross the line. I'm not saying to go in there and be friends. But I'm telling you, your job will be a lot easier if you decide to jump into corrections and you get rid of that cocky mindset of, you know, fuck, they're just inmates or whatever. No. Give the respect. Because that's what I used to do. Yeah, did I have a a temper and... You know, did I have to get a few inmates in line and vice versa? You know, I've, I've, I got into it with, a, with several of them. But I think I had that earned respect on the yard where I, I was firm, fair, and consistent. Remember those three words as well. Firm, fair, and consistent. Consistency is key inside of a prison. And you got to be firm. And fair just comes along with it, right? But if you say you're going to do something and and you tell an inmate that, they expect you to do it. So if they're asking you for a store item or, hey, when is store going to come? Or um, did you get my visitation paperwork? Or whatever they're asking for, other than things that are illegal, if you don't know, just say, look, man, or, or, or who, if you're in a female silly, just say, look, I don't know. I'm going to have to check on it. I'll get back to you. That's your word. That's all you got. Get back to them. Let them know, hey, listen, I checked into it. It's coming or it's, this is where it's at or whatever. Whatever you're looking into, make sure you, if you don't have an answer right away, you look into it and then you get back. In the prison facility, there's a lot of people you may have to contact. You may have to get to a CO3 to talk to a CO4. Or you might have to get to your sergeant to talk to the captain to talk to the deputy warden because this inmate has a lawsuit. Who knows? There's all kinds of things going on. But my point here is adversity can kill you because stress is brutal. And I know that ADCRR, Arizona Department of Corrections Rehab and Rehabilitation, is hiring like crazy right now. And there's a lot of young-minded folks that are jumping into this career and jumping right back out of it, right, as they get out. Once they even, if they get through the academy, they do some OJT at the prison facility and they kind of start to get their feet wet. They're like, "Mm, I don't know if I want to do this. They finish the academy, they get to the prison. First week or two, boom, they're done. They never come back. Don't waste your time, folks. Don't waste your time. Do some research about working in a prison facility. Go watch some of my older videos where I talk about day to, a day in the life of an officer, things that I've encountered, things that you're going to encounter, things that are day-to-day operations, short-staffed, where you're having to run you know, two and three buildings by yourself. You're having to run Blue Yard, and then you have to go over to Red Yard because you don't have enough staff, but you're having to do security checks. Like that type of stuff is going on. And if you're getting into corrections, you'll understand what I mean. A lot of, say if you're working at Lewis, most yards that are a cell setting have two buildings on each side. So you have building one, building two, building three, building four. So you have a blue side and a red side. For instance, at uh, Buckley, you have building one, two, Three, four, blue side, red side, Maury the same way. Rast used to just be building one and two, and the op and the red side was nothing. It was a field. Now it's a max super max unit. It's Rast Max Security. So I had already exited by the time I, they were building that as I was leaving um, 
Lewis complex. But we were the trial phase. I, me and a bunch of, of some good officers ran one Charlie Max. So we did like a test run. We had 50 inmates in there. And we brought them all in from Florence. And we were just testing out, you know, a, f- a level five yard, how, you know, how it was going to be getting people used to it. And, you know, because they were preparing for the Max unit to be built right ac- on, the, on the opposite side on the red yard. So, I, and, and, and I feel like RAS Max runs more as a detention unit than, than a Max, a Super Max facility. You still have SMU 2, SMU 3. Those are Super Max units down in Florence and Iman. Um, but I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, I, I just, when you go through, when you're going through something, you know, seek the help. But I've been seeing and talking to a lot of people that are in corrections and they just couldn't hack it because it's, it's too hard and it's, and it's dangerous and it's short staffed and staff are ridiculous and they do dumb things or they don't show up to work or they don't. It's just it's just negative, negative, negative. And the prison facility is already negative. So if you're not mentally right and you're not mentally stable and prepared to go in and deal with offenders, inmates, on a day-to-day basis who are going to test you immediately and they're going to read you and they're going to know right away if you're weak-minded or not because they will test you as soon as you hit that yard. There's where your firm, fair, and consistent comes in. If you have any, if you show any sign of weakness, sorry, hold on here, or any, any, give them a, an edge to gain, gain, gain on you, they're going to crack you. So remain the same person day in and day out. Yeah, you might have to adapt to some of the situations, but don't start fucking doing a bunch of dumb shit that you know is crossing the line it'll get you caught up quicker than you know trust me when i was a sergeant i knew what my officers were doing i used to monitor the cameras you have lieutenants that do the same thing you have captains i mean they're watching you they might be too busy now but if they're not watching you the inmates are watching you so they're going to go tell on you same thing with officers if you're doing something wrong you're going to get caught up So before you decide to jump in the boat and row yourself into the prison, do some research, folks. And if you think you're just not mature enough or you just haven't had enough life experience, choose a different path. You can be a a correction. I'm going to go over the salary here quickly. Correctional officer trainee, meaning you just come in, work the control rooms. You don't go to the you don't go through the academy. Um, you can't do anything on the yard. You can't have inmate contact. It's like $15 and 86, 86 cents an hour to start. And then it moves up from there. Now, if you're going to become a correctional officer, go through the testing process, go to the academy. I think it's 36 to 42,000 to start. And then once you promote, the money starts to increase from there. Once you get to sergeant, uh, lieutenant, captain, or you can go, go correctional officer three, four, which is the programming side. Um, of the of the uh, promote process promotional process but just do some research i mean you can make good money in the prison facility with overtime you can make really good money i mean i think when i first started i was doing like three i was doing like 24 hours of overtime a week and i might i was clearing like 2600 every two weeks which is five grand a month just off doing ot which is a decent it's decent you know my wife obviously worked so we were doing well um so that just you know that's just some pointers um you know i left i left corrections I, my salaries um i make a decent salary now but i also have things that substitute my salary like you know i get a, a paycheck from youtube it's not it's not 15000 a month but it's it's a decent paycheck i dabble here and there in some markets um, not nothing crazy. Um, I'm about to start uh, selling some T-shirts. You guys will see those shortly. I talked about them the other day. Um, so I, you just have to have some different sources of income too. One income usually doesn't. It's not enough. You know what I mean? It's just not enough. It just depends. I don't know. Depends on your living and the way you live. If you live above your means or if you live below your means. 
or right at your means. But anyway, y'all, I know I rambled on, so just some word of the wise. I just uh, just think about it before you dive in it. Um, on st- with stimulus news, it's at the Senate. They've removed four or five different things, so it's definitely going back to the House. They plan to have it voted on and approved, hopefully by this weekend. Then it'll go back to the House for a final vote. Then it will go to the president for signature. A lot of um, a lot of Republicans are saying, you know, the stimulus or the economy is bouncing back. Things are opening up. Why are we sending out more stimulus money? This is ridiculous. There's only out of the 628 pages in the bill, there's only like a few that really dive in on uh, COVID issues. But that's Biden. That was Biden's one of his first initiatives, and he wants this bill to pass because if it doesn't, it's going to make him look really bad. So he wants this to pass, and I think it will. I think it will pass, and I think you'll see this, the checks go out. But the, everybody, you know, I see a lot of these channels like it's Jimmy who I always bring up. He's he's already talking about a fourth stimulus. There is they are not going to send out another stimulus check. I'm pretty sure this will be it unless we go through another pandemic. They're not going to. For one, they've are. This is number three. One point four. I think it's down to one point four trillion. I'll double check on that. But they were just talking on the news this morning, and I talked about it yesterday or the day before. Inflation is going up. The cost of gas, the cost of groceries, the cost of just basic goods, clothing. It's all gone up because the government is kicking crazy money out and we're already in a deficit. So just because they send you some stimulus checks to stimulate the economy, that's not how they're they're not going to get all their money back from that. I think it's four hundred and twenty three billion that they're going to send out in stimulus checks. But they've already sent out five. This will be like five or six trillion altogether. Um, And not just to the United States, but think about that. They're raising the cost of everything. They were just talking about it. Minimum wage, it wouldn't even have mattered if they would have raised minimum wage. Inflation will continue to go up. Car insurance is going up. They were talking about the interest rate on homes is going up. I'm telling you, we are headed for a huge crash if things don't turn around quickly. Pay attention to that. Pay attention to the market. We're headed there. It's it's coming. Mark my words. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I, it's coming. Fox 10 was just talking about it this morning with the CNN anchor. It's coming. Because all this money will affect generations to come. Like Social Security, Social Security disability, retirement. They're borrowing money and they they can't pay it back. And they're borrowing a lot of it from Social Security Fund. I don't even know if I'll have Social Security as I get to that age. Hopefully. We'll see. Anyway, y'all, I've rambled on too long. i got a lot of things to do today. I've got, um, I've just got a lot going on in the old personal life. So I will, um, I'll catch you in the next one. Remember, it's okay not to be okay, but just... Don't stay that way. Seek help. Um, There's help all over out there. And a lot of it, you don't even have to pay, especially if you're employed. Check into your company's employee uh, assistance program. Reach out to your HR rep or your employee relations rep or whatever you need to do to get the help you need. Um, You might have to take a leave of absence from work um, because, you know, stress is just kicking your ass and 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 it kicks you while you're down so anyway say a prayer for the man here hopefully things work out sure they will they always do um i just feel like you know sometimes in a in a family court of law they don't see it the way you do all right y'all i'll catch you in the next one Peace. Peace.